Yeah, look, I'm probably up and about at probably a bit after six. We're trying to get into the club at about quarter past seven. Um, you know, we've obviously got a big review day. Um, the game's already been watched by myself and all of our coaches. And so when they arrive at the club at about quarter past seven on Monday morning, we're ready to go by half past seven to start reviewing. Yeah, I'm really, really wrapped the way our coaches apply themselves in that manner because um, it's a lot of time away from family. So they've got to sort of time their run and I've got to time my run of, of, of spending a lot of time in front of the computer watching the game over again and getting that balance of spending time with, you know, my wife and three kids. And um, so you, f you, you tend to find yourself doing a lot of early morning shifts, like Sunday morning you might get up really early and do a couple of hours. And then when the kids get up, um, you're ready to spend some time with them. And then likewise, late at night, maybe at about nine o'clock when they're in bed, you might find a couple of hours then. Um, you've got to get that right balance because you don't want your, your brain going to bed, trying to go to sleep when it's when it's fried from um, watching too much footy. 11 years at the Bulldogs, started as a 16 year old, played 172 games, went to Richmond, played 84 games at the Tigers, um, was involved in about four or five prelims, n never lucky enough to play in a grand final. Stepped into coaching back at the Bulldogs for seven years, went to the Hawthorne for two years to coach as well, and then came up and spent my final year under Sheeds before taking over the reins as head coach. Is that 30 seconds and under? <laughs> When I stepped straight out of AFL playing in 2003, I went straight into coaching at the Bulldogs for 2004. And there and then, I'll be totally honest, I wasn't expecting to be a senior coach. I liked the idea of being an assistant coach, but it was probably about three years in at the Bulldogs when Rodney Ede gave me you know, a lot of responsibility as an assistant coach to coach the midfield that I really did start to think that maybe I'd like to be a senior coach and um, and what I needed to put in place to, to give that opportunity. I still sit back and think that if I hadn't have done the long apprenticeship, um, then uh, I don't think I'd be still coaching today because it sort of helps you, um, you know, make better decisions under pressure um, by seeing a lot more and also spreading your wings along uh, around a couple of different clubs. I learned a lot from Rodney Eid, a lot from Alistair Clarkson and obviously my final year under Kevin Sheedy and um, you know coaching is a you know is a pressure cooker game and um, if you don't get the right decisions um, you don't make the right decisions more more likely than not then um, then you're you're in a bit of strife and there's no doubt having a long apprenticeship has helped that. It's the biggest sacrifice you sacrifice is family time and um, I'm really conscious of spending as much time with um, Harry, Jack and Amelia and my wife Kaz as much as I possibly can and um, um, you know I don't play much golf, I don't sort of tend to have hobbies that take up an extraordinary amount of time because of uh, you want to go and watch the boys play footy or the or Amelia play netball or a dancing concert or, or so forth. So. Um, that's the biggest thing. I think that um, you're actually—it's not—it's actually not myself sacrificing for myself. It's actually—it's um, the time that the, the the family doesn't get. But I love doing it um, because uh, you, know, you don't want to not do the time, knowing that if you sit back and say, "If only I had got a player A talking to player B a bit better." If I had done that better, then the synergy would have been better, which ultimately stops a goal that costs, you know, that allows you to get into another final. So all these little moments that add up, and there's thousands and thousands of moments in every game that you you want your players on the same page, and um, that's what we're trying to do. We've made some ground this year, but um, we look forward to uh, what's coming ahead. Go listen to Nova. Um, the most. I love the mornings with Fitzy and Whipper. They know a little bit about footy. I know Fitzy's a Swan supporter but um, and a Crows man, but um, I think he has a soft spot for the Giants as well. But listening to those two, uh, you know, can get your day off and do a uh, really good start. Um, so uh, I'd have to say Nova is probably my number one station I listen to. Oh, I think a good organisation, the coach should feel as though that he's in control of what he set out because um, it means it's too flippant if it's not and um, I feel as though I'm in control of our footy program 
but ultimately you feel a lot better if your players know that they're in control as well and um, and they're driving it and leading the charge on the program that's set in place and there's no split on why, why, why we're doing this and um, if you get that then I think you ultimately give yourself a great chance to create great cohesion and, and great improvement and that's what ultimately we're trying to do every year. The challenge now going forward is is now a new season's upon us and that's finals footy and um, we've been pretty good in our last couple of finals campaigns but not good enough. Um, and um, we know the position we sit in and um, we look forward to the challenge in the coming weeks. I think the two things is juggling the week off. Um, is it a good thing, is it a bad thing? People will argue it's come at a good time for us because we've had a few setbacks, but you can only debate that once you see the performance you put up in your first week of the finals. And secondly, um, the intensity we all know of finals footy is, is, just, is just relentless. And, um, and it's just, it, it mightn't be always pretty footy. There'll be some brilliant pieces of play from you know, the teams that are playing, but equally, it'll be just, you know, crash and bash and contested ball and who's got the most energy to keep and continue on. And uh, um, we, we look forward to that challenge. We've sort of played a little bit in that manner in the back half of the year. So it's not as if it's um, foreign to us. But we also know there's probably you know, there's seven other sides that can do the same thing. So I think it's just going to be survival of the fittest and survival of the toughest in the end. And uh, normally the, the side that does that the best normally gets up at the end.